Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how and when to use normal approximation for the distribution of a sample proportion. Suppose the true population proportion were p equals 0.5, and a researcher takes a simple random sample of size n equals 50. Find and interpret the standard deviation of the sample proportion p hat. So p hat is just the standard notation we're going to use to represent the sample proportion. Uh, the proportion of yeses that we get in a sample. And so we can look up the formula for standard deviation of p hat. It's going to be the square root of p1 minus p over n. And so we know that p is 0.5 and n is 50, so we can plug those in and we'll get 0 0.0707. What do we mean by the standard deviation? How do we interpret it? We know that p hat will vary from sample to sample because we're taking random samples um, of size 50 from a population. So p hat will vary from sample to sample. How much is it likely to vary? This standard deviation tells us about that. Uh, additionally, we can interpret this standard deviation as error. The average error in our sample uh, proportion, in our estimate, from the true value. So we can say that on average, the sample proportion varies from the true population proportion by 0 0.0707. This is how much error we can expect um, in our sample estimate. Part B, calculate the probability that the sample proportion will be larger than 0.55 for a random sample of size 50. So let's see, we want the probability that our sample proportion p hat will be bigger than 0.55. We need to find the mean or expected value, but the mean of the sample proportion is just the true proportion, and that's 0.5. So there's no calculation to be done there. For the standard deviation, we've already calculated that. And now let's check to see if normal approximation will be a good approximation for this distribution of p hat. We need np and n1 minus p to be at least 10. So in this case, NP is 50 times by 0.5 is greater than or equal to 10. N1 minus P is also 50 times 0.5, which of course is greater than or equal to 10. So normal approximation will be reasonable here. So we can find a z-score. So z is going to be the value of interest, which is this 0.55, minus our expected value or average, divided by the standard deviation. And that comes out to 0.71. It's coincidence that these two numbers are almost the same. So we have a z-score of 0.71, and we want the probability that the sample proportion will be larger. So we're going to look for the area to the right of this z-score under the normal curve. So using uh, whichever technology you prefer, here we'll use a TI. So we'll go to second bars, which is distribution. Choose number two, normal CDF. Our lower bound is 0.71. Our upper bound is some big number, so we'll just do 6. And we'll hit Enter, Enter. And we get 0.24, let's say. So this probability is 0.24. So the probability that our sample proportion ends up bigger than 0.55 is about 0.24. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.